Hello and welcome to this edition of We on Climate Tracker. My name is Molly Gambhir. For days now, the European Union has been struggling to hammer out new climate change policies. But the members have finally agreed on some targets and one of them is grabbing headlines. A ban on the sale of combustion engine vehicles from 2035. This will mean a 100% cut in CO2 emissions by new cars. No petrol and diesel cars will be allowed to be sold. However, any car bought before the year will be allowed on European roads. This plan will call for more charging stations and synthetic fuels. But environmentalists have raised objections because the use of this technology in cars is expensive and energy consuming. The synthetic fueled engines emit as much nitrogen oxide as their fossil fuel equivalents. The second policy focuses on a carbon market overhaul. The European Union has decided to upgrade its carbon market. It is being touted as its main emissions cutting policy. Now, under this rule, industry and power plants will be forced to buy CO2 permits when they pollute. So what this means is that a set limit of permits will be allowed each year. And if this rule is adopted, the number of permits will be reduced by 4.2% annually. And right now, a section of industries is handed over CO2 permits for free. This will be phased out by 2035. Talking about a new carbon market, it will impose a cost on buildings and transportation using polluting fuels. This new market will launch in 2027, but it will be accompanied with a supporting fund for poorer households. A $62 billion fund will be announced. The fourth policy focuses on renewables, energy savings. By 2030, EU countries will derive 40% of energy from, renew from renewable sources. This was 22% in the year 2020. Just last month, Brussels had proposed even more ambitious targets. The officials had urged the partners to cut reliance on Russian fossil fuels because the war has unmasked the dangers of being dependent only on one source of energy. But a decision on this has been pushed for later negotiations. Lastly, national emissions targets. The EU nations have agreed to cultivate forests, wetlands and improve soil health. These measures will help store more CO2 in a natural way. For example, plants, oceans and soil are known to absorb the CO2 that we emit. These policies are an important step towards a greener future. After all, the 27-country bloc is the world's third biggest greenhouse gas emitter. But to understand how much of this will actually translate into action and fight against climate change, with us on the broadcast is Laura Debris. She is the European Climate Pact Ambassador of the Netherlands. Laura, thanks for being here with us. Uh, these are ambitious policies that are being laid out by the bloc. Let's talk about them one by one. Now, ending the sale of new fossil fuel powered cars by 2035. This plan will call for more charging stations and synthetic fuels. But synthetic fueled engines emit as much nitrogen oxide as their fossil fuel counterparts. So how do you assess this? Yes, thank you. I think it's really important that we do not only, only look at how can we drive differently, but also how can we drive less? Because right now we emit a lot of carbon, of, of course, and we just know that also our resource scarcity is a really big problem. And to have our a whole uh, uh, our oil car fleet electrified, we will have to use a real, yeah, a lot of resources. And that's going to be a really big problem. So we also really have to look at how can we use less cars? How we, can we use more public transport? And in areas where it's really needed, we can use a car. But then also, how can we share more cars? So I think it's really important to also look at how can we use less. And uh, of course, it's really great that we have this deal right now. And we will, uh, yeah, be facing less fossil fuels in the future because we know that it's just not future proof at this moment. But uh, we also really have to look at how we can use less cars. 
for example, in the Netherlands, we uh, yeah, there is research uh, being uh, being made that um, a lot of cars are being like standing on the road for 23 hours a day, and they're only being used for one hour a day, and often only for like one car member when there are five seats. And that's just a lot of emission for nothing. Also, when you have an electric car, it's a lot of resources for one person for one hour a day. And then public transport is just a lot better. So I think we should also just really look at using less and using things more efficient. Sure. Uh, industry and power plants will also be forced to buy CO2 permits when they pollute. Uh, explain to us the significance of this step. Well, I think it's really important for us that we also that we uh, get into a system where pollution is uh, something you do, do not do not want to do. Not only because it's not bad for our world and therefore for our children, but also because it's just really bad for your wallet. So uh, I think it's a really big step that we're trying to make sure that uh, the the le yeah the the less sustainable option is being more expensive and being like. Um, tax more so that we eventually will have a more sustainable world. So, for example, also when you look at the ETS, of course, we see that um, carbon is being discouraged step by step. And we see that it's really helping and it's really important that we make sure the prices of carbon go up so the sustainable option becomes more, yeah, a better option for us. So uh, I think it's a really big step. Right. The Russia-Ukraine war has thrown up new challenges and the EU has also been criticized when it comes to meeting its climate targets on that front. Um, so how prepared is the bloc, according to you, to meet this rather ambitious target of a complete shift towards electric vehicles? Well, I think we're uh, we're making really big steps to more to electri electrify a world, but we also really have to look at, for example, the resources. Do we have enough resources to take on this Kind of challenge and it's really important that we do of course because we're uh, we we do have to more be more uh, independent with our energy and we have to uh, produce energy more locally but also renewable and sustainable so i think we're really are uh, on a good way uh, at least for um for uh, for some countries but we still have a long way to go because um yeah when when we look at the bottom line of course we have to be carbon neutral as soon as possible we're also already too late so the renewable energy and the renewables and um, sustainable energy is, is really important that we do it as fast as possible. And to be honest, we're not on track yet. Um, we're doing better than we did a lot of years, but we're not on track yet. We're not near on track yet. And that's a really big problem. So I um, always like to urge everyone to please also uh, look at how you can use energy less as an industry, but also just living in a home because we also have to look at how we can reduce our energy use and not only how, uh, at how we can use it more sustainable, but also really let how can we reduce our use. Laura, appreciate very much joining us on the broadcast. Thanks. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.